Hey guys and welcome to a schematic special. This time we want to talk about QB Fractorium and for that we invited Mirko. Hey. Hey, thank you for inviting me. Sure thing. So first of all, you're the dev of the game that we want to talk about and Blind will play later on. Could you please introduce yourself a little bit like who you are, what your gaming background and stuff like that. Yeah, thank you. So um, my name is Mirko Seiter. I'm an indie game developer. I um, have a day job as a research institute and um, I have like an academic background in economics and computer science. But uh, since like um, five years ago, I'm doing a lot of indie game development. Um, my previous game was Boss Constructor, which was uh, a 2D space action shooter where you build your own spaceship. And uh, since last year, I've been working on Kubi Factorium, and um, currently there is a Kickstarter campaign running to fund the game. Cool. So, as said earlier, I have Blind with me as well. Hey, dude. Hello. Yep, I'm here. And you're playing the game. Currently free for anybody to try, and it's up on itch.io, uh, if you would mm -hmm. like to go mess around with it yourself. And um, I'm just going to hop into a custom map here. There is a tutorial, which will kind of get you through the basics um which was quite helpful actually especially with this type of game and uh oh, yeah we're, we're gonna hop in here so um tell us a little bit about qb factorium and what kind of game it is okay so um the easiest way to understand it if you know some of the games it is related to it is a mix of like the settlers gnomoria in the early game where you build like a settlement and a small colony then in the mid to late game it is going to be a bit like um, Factorio where you build automation and um, transport systems and um, you know manage like a large scale economy. Cool. So we are starting with a couple of settlers and a ship that has a little bit of cargo in there and we are as you said first of all build up our settlement. So what would be the first thing to do? Okay, so usually you begin by unloading your ship. So it has like some wooden locks and um, rocks and like your basic food and drinks stored, uh, which helps you get started with your settlement. Great. And Blind is already unloading the ship, or better said, his, his settlers. So Blind, what... Sorry. I was Go just going to say, they're doing all the hard work here. I'm just kind of marveling yeah. at the fact that I spawned on this neat little island here. It's kind of a cute start. I like it. So I'm going to start by building a bonfire, which is going to extend the building area that we can work in here because I don't have any space whatsoever. But that's just... Yeah, so the, the, the maps are procedurally generated. So, um, you know, I've tried to reduce these sorts of cases, but uh, yeah, you got sort of unlucky That's here. Fine. Well, I mean, there are worth, uh, worse things to have than a private island, right? I mean, we have this, we have a lot of resources. It's just going to be a matter of kind of getting off the island, right? So once we get all of our resources over here, I think we'll be fine. I mean, there's lots of animals wandering around. We've got little berry bushes and trees and rocks. Exactly. So, Mirko, can you tell us what is basically, what do you need for a start? Obviously, you need um, your bonfire to extend the area, as Blind already said, but what else would you say is the first thing to do? Okay, so first I would begin by um, creating a simple food production, food and drinks. So um, mm -hmm. your settlers will not really starve or anything, but um, they are more efficient when they are well fed. So mm -hmm. um, in order to create drinks in the beginning, you can set up a well and you can set up a farm to grow wheat and um, strawberries, for example. Mm -hmm. So are there any difference between the resources like the food resources? Or does it matter if you produce wheat or strawberries? So currently it does not. So currently every piece of fo food is um, equivalent, but later on mm -hmm. you will be rewarded with having like a variety of different things. Mm -hmm. Like the settlers will be happier if they do not have to eat the same thing every time. Okay. Yeah, but currently it doesn't make a difference. 
Okay. So blind, what did you just do? So Can I just, I just, I started a well being constructed first mm -hmm. off. I built a stockpile and then assigned the well to deliver to the stockpile. I also uh, <clears throat> set a whole bunch of trees to be cut down for resources. Yeah. I now need to uh, select one of my little settlers here and uh, tell it to mine and harvest. So it's gonna, we'll just get two of them on that. And we'll take you off of building just for some efficiency. And uh, they're going to go start chopping down trees. And then eventually they will deliver all of this over here. Now I need to assign somebody to the well. Let's find someone who is not chopping trees. And you can go work on the well. I think I did that right. Maybe not. Oh, what are you doing now? Hmm. Got that selected to go there. Am I missing something? Nope, I don't think so. There we go. Yeah, it worked. Sweet. So, uh, it's now gonna go hack away at the well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask a question here. Um, what made you decide to go with the very voxel art style for the game? Because um, I personally think it looks adorable, especially when you zoom in. It it looks yeah. fantastic, but you kind of run the risk of blending in with so many other voxel style games and being immediately compared on uh, to you know things like Minecraft or uh, games like Stonehearth, for example. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so um, the thing is, like when I'm making a game, I'm primarily like game design and programming focused. So that is the things I think I'm good at and um, things I can deliver on. So I'm not really good at making graphics, I think, or like at rigging or like 3D modeling or something. So um, creating voxel models is like really efficient and um, it's really, you know, I do like a lot of prototyping where I add some products or at like a factory or something and um, it's really easy to get like a prototype running in um, in voxel style. Mm -hmm. um, so that benefits me a lot and makes it a lot faster to develop things. Um, I'm also using like a lot of shader effects. Like you can see the shadows and the uh, ambient occlusion and like the depth of field effect. And um, there are also some custom shaders uh, which... Um, create sort of a bevel effect so like if you look really closely you can see that things look like they are a bit rounded which is like i think pretty nice so um yeah so that is the style i'm going with okay so blind what's what you're doing now i see you kind of um want to produce i think it's rocks right yeah i mean I'm just kind of trying to clear out space right now because I can't build where yeah. there's resources on the ground. Uh, kind of the next order of business for me personally is to just try and get as much of this wood out of the way as possible. And uh, <laughs> then we're going to get some farms set up. Um, and then once we have food coming from the farms, um, we're going to start getting our first line of production up and running. Mm -hmm. What Wait. would be the first line of production to get running? That's going to be our basic workplace, which is what we're going to use to build planks and uh, bricks mm -hmm. and then tools as well. So I think I can probably so start with the farms. Okay. I played it a little bit as well. And what I noticed is that you unlock more things to build while you're going. And so if you have planks, you unlock, for example, a table so you can or your settlers can rest. Um, is that a mechanic that will continue through the game, Nico? Um, probably yes. So um, I want to prevent the player to be overwhelmed in the beginning, like having like mm -hmm. uh, 30 different buildings and so on. Um, you have to keep yeah. in mind there will be many more buildings and uh, things in the later game, in, in the development mm -hmm. progresses. And um, I think like unlocking stuff like this is like, first of all, it provides an incentive for the player to like, uh, you know, get new new materials. Like it's like a reward for getting something new. Um, but it, I think it also makes the game more approachable by eliminating things which are not relevant at this point in time. Mm. Uh, another question, since it was just raining, are these weather effects pure cosmetic or do they have any gameplay relevance? Yes, yeah, so currently they are. 
So currently there is no effect beyond like looking nice. Um, but I think later on there will be, there might be, for example, a penalty for, you know, the settlers being in a sad mood when it's raining. But it could also be like a beneficial effect for your farms, for example. So um, that is all not very hard to implement. I just haven't really decided on whether um, how much of an effect it should have. Well, that's the sort of thing that you, uh, you you get once you've had uh, significant testing and balancing on the game itself, right? And uh, to do that, you need to uh, have people playing the game, which is probably one of the reasons you've decided to go to Kickstarter. So let's let's talk about the Kickstarter for a second here. What are your goals and what do you hope to get out of it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, basically there are two goals. The one is obviously the funding, which would help a lot. <laughs> and um, the second reason is that I want to get like a, a player base of people playing and testing the game and providing feedback. Mm -hmm. So um, in uh, Boss Constructor, when I did it back then, um, community feedback helped me a lot. Like um, it's it's so hard as an indie developer if you don't have like a QA department or a testing department to really figure out these little quirks your game has and which you need to iron out before it is released. Um, yeah, but also just feedback like, for example, just now a player said like he would like to use the space bar to pause and unpause the game. Right? It, it's really straightforward and it's really easy to implement, but I would have never thought of it, for example. Awesome. You mentioned moods earlier, so can you explain us what role moods will play later in the game? Yes, yeah, so um, if you click on one of your colonists and um, hover over, for example, um, one of the tasks, um, then you can see that there are a bunch of status effects. So for example, mm -hmm. this guy is um, he has a learned skill of three. Mm -hmm. He has carrying a tool which gives him plus four, like the wood chopping one, um, for example. And um, he also had a drink recently, which uh, makes him a bit happier, but he doesn't have a home, which detracts a bit. And mm -hmm. um, basically it all um, comes together in one efficiency score, which basically determines how, um, you know, how long it takes that settler to chop a tree or something like that. Mm, okay. I think later on it will also influence like the production quality. So if you are crafting a weapon, for example, um, the quality of the weapon will also depend on whether your settler is well fed. Great you mention uh, weapons, because there's combat in the game or will be later on. Um, I haven't played around with that. Is it already in the demo or is it a thing for later? <laughs> it sort of is in the demo, it is a bit buggy. Uh, that is okay. actually what I've been working on today. So um, tomorrow I will publish a video where it's like 100 colonists versus 100 spiders or something. Um, oh, great. Just to um, get the combat up. And so you can actually already uh, spawn enemies, um, mm -hmm. but um, they will probably not attack you. So um, I don't know if you have the debug options enabled. I don't know how to do that, I don't think. Okay, so go to the main menu in the top right. The top right button. Then settings. And then debug cheat mode in the bottom right. Okay, it's already enabled. So then you can hit F8. Oh, interesting. And you can basically oh. spawn every object that is in the game. So um, the demo only has like a part of the objects which are implemented, but if you go to the top left button in the build panel, then you can spawn some enemies. Oh, I see. So like, so like a scorpion or what's a mining robot? There's robots. Slime? The thing is that they will not be hostile. So you can spawn them, but okay. um, they will be friendly. So that is the only issue here. The friendly little oh, slime. Cute. So basically, if you want to see combat now, you need to 
go to him and slaughter him. Okay. Um, yeah, exactly. But since the slime is friendly, your colonists will not attack it. <laughs> ah, okay. Gotcha. It has like a little glow around that. That is adorable. <laughs> yeah. That is really so, cool. You got an exclamation point on your working bench find. Yes, um, because I need to do two things. I need to uh, select a place for or select a place for uh, it to deliver its resources, and I also mm -hmm. need to select a thing to make. So we're going to make wooden boards and stone blocks here. Um, I also need to expand the size of this stockpile. I was a little bit distracted by the, the slime over there. Gonna expand that. Continue delivering stuff there. And then I need to make somebody work on it because there's current... Well, mm. We also need to deliver stuff somewhere. So let's give it a small stockpile back here. Nothing super major. Something nice and small. And uh, you will deliver there. Just simply by clicking and right clicking. It's very simple. Okay. And uh, then we need to assign somebody to work on it. Let's see if we can find somebody who isn't busy. There is actually yeah. like a settler management panel. Okay. Top right, uh, next to the fast forward button. Yeah. And here you can see at a glance how good the settlers are at the different tasks. And, um, you know. I didn't even notice that before. Oh. Cool. Um, hmm. That's why we invited a developer. <laughs> so. Got you. So I guess the, the bigger the circ the bigger the squares are, the better they are at the skill. Exactly. Yeah. That how that works. Okay. Cool. Everybody seems to be pretty good at the basic workplace, so uh, we'll throw you two onto the basic workplace, and then they'll eh, we'll take you off of building. So we'll just get that done. So on the left, you can see the tool which they pick up. So there are three or four kinds of tools. And depending on the tasks you assign them, they will pick up a different tool. So, for example, they will pick up a pickaxe if you, you know, set them to harvest and mine, or pick up a hammer if they are to produce something, and so on. Do the tools do the tools degrade over time? Is that something I'm going to need to replace? So that is sort of a long-term design question. I'm not sure about. So. Um, like I think, in order to make this game work, you will need to have a long, uh, like long production lines and a lot of production going on. Mm -hmm. And um, how games like Factorio did it, they had uh, research as a resource sink, right? So you needed like mm -hmm. um, a huge amount of resources to get your research going. So um, I could do the same, but what I would probably prefer is to have com combat or production be the resource sink so that um, you can or you need to craft weapons in order to fight um, harder enemies later on but every time you fight uh, your weapons degrade really fast so you need to build new ones so so it's like like a trade of you need to invest into um, uh, weapons in order to expand your territory later on when enemies are across mm. the map. So blind, did I saw it right? You just build a road. Yep, I've been building roads. I'm not actually sure the purpose of them. I just like the way that they look. Um, so, <laughs> do roads have any ben benefit um, currently, uh, or are they just an aesthetic thing right now? Uh, currently, they are just aesthetic. So I tried to make it so that uh, the colonists run a bit faster on the roads. However, that currently doesn't seem to be possible with the navigation system I'm using. Um, the secondary use will be for the logistics system, which will come next. And um, it will be used to connect um, workshops to uh, stockpiles in a second way. Mm -hmm. And um, like the idea of the logistics system is if you have um, different colonies across your island, for example, like a farming area and a mining area. And you want to have your food shipped to the mining area and the resources shipped back to your main colony, right? And um, mm -hmm. since you, I don't want the player to like manually, um, you know, select what has to be sent where, I want to make a logistic system where the player selects um, or connects different stockpiles via means of transportation and then the logistics system will automatically figure out what to transport. 
So uh, that is mm. something I'm going to work on next. Yeah, I was going to ask about that because we have this boat here which we unloaded. And there's options to load and leave. Um, can you explain what that is for? Yeah, um, so um, later on there will be something like a campaign. And in this campaign you will make colonies on different islands. So there will be like grassland islands like here, there will be desert islands and some other biomes. And uh, each of these biomes will feature different resources. So in order to progress down your research tree you will end up needing different types of um, materials. And um, there will still be some sort of trade between your previous colonies and your new colony. So depending on what you do on your older colonies, so for example if you make this a, um, a wood cutting colony or something, then this colony would send you um, wooden logs later on for your new islands to get started. Interesting. So if I got you right, you will have multiple islands that interact with each other. I mean, like the productions. Or is it more like I build on one island and unlock stuff that I have basically un unlocked from the beginning for the second island? So is it more like a progress thing or is it more like an interaction thing? Um, this isn't like 100% decided yet. So my okay. current theory is um, that you leave um, a few of your colonists behind. So for example, mm -hmm. you have eight colonists and you leave one behind. And then that, this one colonist will continue producing wood and send it to your new colony. So um, in the progress of the campaign, you can sort of balance which resources you need. And um, like, for example, if you know you're going to desert island next, right? Mm -hmm. And it will be hard to find wood and grow plants. Then it might make a lot of sense to make this a farming colony and send food over there, right? Mm -hmm. So I have like so sort of like a macro level strategy um, in this in the course yeah. of the campaign. Kind of reminds me of the way the Anno series works when you have multiple cities in different areas. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. To be honest, that is almost sort of the end of the demo content. Mm -hmm. um, you can see if you can find clay on the island, and if you find clay, you can build a kiln and create bricks. But um, that is optional. So you could explore the island now. Exactly. So you can take one of your settlers and um, just by right clicking send him across the island and see if you find something you like. I didn't realize I had direct control over that. Okay. Since we have direct control, this is a little bit of feedback here. Um, a lot of RTS games that you hold shift and then click multiple spots be a lovely feature for something like this. Yeah, I could add that too, yeah. Like waypoints and so on. There's slime. How big are these islands? I saw there are multiple sizes of them. Let's say, uh, how, how big is this map? I, I think it's a medium size that we are now on. Compared yeah. to like, Sounds let's say the big one. Sounds about right. Um, so um, I haven't really tested like what the performance limitations will be. Mm -hmm. So I can't really say yet how big the islands can become. But um, so far um, I'm pretty confident like this is a medium size as you say. Mm -hmm. But um, like the big size, uh, let me think. I think the medium is 96 by 96 tiles. I think the big one is 160 by 160. So it's like three times as many tiles approximately. Well, this is still a pretty big island now. Blind, you found pigs? Did I saw that right? Yeah, I found pigs over here and there's a little flag next to them. So what can we do with this? So, um... <laughs> looks slightly buggy to be honest um, <laughs> I think mm. you can recruit the pigs um, um, 
Yeah, this is a bit buggy. So they should tell you what they need. Um, I think they need wheat. And if you have sufficient wheat, you can recruit them. And when you recruit okay. them, they can do tasks, like they can um, carry things, for example. Oh, neat. Oh, awesome. So you can basically tame animals. Yes. So, um, yes. So in an, in an earlier build, you could um, tame any animal that was on the map. But that was a bit overpowered, like you would suddenly, um, like logistics would become a non-issue if you had like 50 pigs running around. <laughs> so now you have these little missions where you, so either you have to defeat um, some enemies which are capturing, which have captured these animals or settlers, for example, or you have to um, fulfill some good requirements. So for example, provide what they need. Hmm. I seem to have this menu stuck open here. Yeah, it looks like there has been some bug, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Well, we've broken well, something, but you know, this consider is... it reported. <laughs> yeah. Consider this is a very early demo. I think that this needs to be completely clear. Like, um, compared to what you want the finished product to be, um, how complete would you say this is right now? Um. So I would say about forty percent. So the basic um, technical stuff is working, like the graphic system and um, like the AI and the uh, workshop and production things, they are all working. Um, what is largely missing is content. So like uh, goods and workshops and um, production and so on. That is the main part that is missing. Um, and But also balancing and like putting it all together. So um, you have seen in the trailer, there is like um, conveyor belts and zeppelins and automated depots and things like that. And I sort of need to figure out how to combine all of these together and like make it a um, smooth um, transition between the different stages of the game. So I think gameplay or game design wise, that is the main challenge I'm facing at the moment. And um, yeah, other than that, um, I will use the feedback which I get in the upcoming weeks to like polish the game like it is now. And um, yeah, slowly add more content and um, yeah, slowly improve the different systems. So like I said, I'm, uh, today I've been working on the combat system to produce a video for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm also working on this logistics system which will automatically generate transport jobs later on. Can, can you give us some sort of like a timeline, like a roadmap. Now you're obviously just started your Kickstarter. What's the next goal after the Kickstarter is finished? So when is there an early access version or will there be an early access version? And when do you plan on getting that um, released? Currently, after the Kickstarter campaign ends, there will be a closed alpha where the people who have back to the game will get to play it. Based on that uh, feedback, I want to make it really polished. And I also want to implement the major features which are still missing, like the combat system and also like the world map, like um, the transition between the islands, which I mentioned earlier. And when that is done, and, and I plan about early 2019 for that, um, the game will also come to Steam Early Access. That is my current plan. And like for the final release, it will be like uh, late 2019 or 2020. So I'm not, it, it's hard to plan ahead so far. As you earlier said, we basically seen what's in the demo right now or what's done for the demo right now. I want to give you the chance to basically shout out yourself and tell um, the viewers where to find the game, find your Kickstarter and yeah. Thank you. If you're interested in backing the game, um, you can find it on Kickstarter, where it is um, currently on a good way to get funded. For the um, main news and info, you can go to my website or my blog, which is kubifactorium.com. And um, for social media, I use Facebook a lot. So if you want to interact or share it with your friends, um, I can recommend um, visiting and liking the Facebook page. Yeah, thank you very much. And um, I hope you enjoy what you see and uh, I'm interested in seeing where the game goes. I'm very excited to see more from this project and I and I look forward to following it over the 
coming months as it progresses. Thank you. So first of all, thanks again, Mirko, for joining and talking a little bit about QB Factorium, your game that's currently on Kickstarter. Obviously, I will put put all the links in the description so you guys out there can access the Kickstarter and the fa uh, Facebook page. You can find that very easily in the description. Thank you again very much for inviting me. Thanks for joining. And thanks to you guys out there for watching the video. If you liked the video, don't forget to thumbs up the video. If you really enjoyed the video, you may want to consider heading over to our coffee page to buy the editor, in this case, Blind a Coffee, so he can edit this video after he streamed for 15 hours, probably like he usually do. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot for listening again. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions about the game, let us know in the comment section below, by the way, as well. Anyway, thanks a lot for listening again. See you next time. Bye. Thanks for watching. Time to turn the AC back on. <laughs> Good point. <laughs>